To continue working on Tommy Church's pool garden, we're going to illustrate a few commands that will help you complete the exercise. The first things we'll look at are the divide, measure, and polar array commands in order to create the pattern of stonework that goes around the pool. In order to break this line into four separate pieces, we're going to come and under draw, select the divide command. If we allow the menu to, the help menu to open up, you can see in the second line, use DDP type to set the style and size of points. And this is an important note that you want to remember. So if we select the divide command, we select this object, this line, that simply goes from the pool edge over to the arc. And what we want to do is divide this into four pieces. So just type in four, hit return, and you don't really see anything happen here. And that's because we haven't set the points or the display type for this, which is why that DP type command is important. And you see this menu pop up. Right now it's only displaying a one pixel point and we can create something larger, which you'll be able to adjust later on. But right now we can use this symbol, and as you can see, we have something that now reads. This is just illustrating where these points are. This is not something that you will need to plot out in your final drawing. So we can now use the line command to simply connect these two lines together. And you'll notice that this isn't selecting this point. So we need to come down for the OSNAP reference and make certain that you select node. And so node is one of these points that has been created through the divide command. So we can come back and you can see that we now have that selected. We also had parallel and well, we have midpoint as well, but we can now click, right click, and we have this line here, and we can select line again and connect and subdivide this now into these various pieces. The next segment that we're going to want to set up is a line. What we want to do here is to subdivide this into a series of three foot lengths around this arc. Now, typically this is something that might be difficult measuring along the length of an arc. What we can use to do that is the measure command. And if you click on measure, we select the object to measure, which is this arc, and we can specify the length of a segment. And if we want this to be three feet long, we simply type three and hit return. And since we've already set the DDP type, you can now see this symbol generated all around the arc. So our next step is to use the polar array command to take this line and rotate it around this arc. So the process for doing that is to first select polar array, select the object, which is this line, and hit return or right click on your mouse if you've set that up. Set the base point. And so if you simply hold on the arc, you'll notice that because we have OSNAP set for center for a circle, we can simply come over and click on that center point. And now if we zoom out, you can see that it's it defaulted to just six lines or six times repeating this line and that's going all the way around, we can simply drag back over here to change the distance. And we, if we click on our first node point, that's going to set up the subdivision for these three foot lines. And right now this is only going, again, for creating six lines. We want to expand this. And so if we simply drag around to the end here, 
we can set up our array so that it goes the full 90 degrees. Next, we're going to look at how to represent the house. Right now, we have these lines, and you can see that these are just separate line segments representing the edge of the house. And what we want to do is first join these together. So under Modify, we can come and select Join, or just simply type Join in. And we can see now that this is now one polyline. We can also notice that this house is on our joint layer, which is not where we want it to be. So we can change layers, and you can do this for any object, by simply going and moving this to the appropriate layer, in this case, house. So you can see that the color is now changed to the dark blue for the house. We also want to offset this by 3 quarters of a foot, or 0.75 feet. So just simply click the Offset command, specify the distance, 0.75, and click on the inside of the house. Our next step is going to be to use the Hatch command to fill in the wall and create a solid object first thing that we want to do is go to our layers and make certain that house is our current layer. Then we can just simply use the line command to seal off this end of the house. Over here we're going to use the line command to simply close off the other end of the house. We can now take this line and use the offset command, and we're going to bring that in 0.5 feet, and that's going to represent the center section between the sets of double doors, or the French doors. We'll then offset again and take this in 6 feet to represent the width of the double doors. Now what we'll do is simply seal this to make one object. So we'll use the join command to connect that. And let's go back to our other end of our house and we'll do the same thing here. We're going to simply select these objects and join them all together. Now we can use the hatch command, which is under draw. Simply click on that we're going to use Solid Fill, and so if we come in, we can click here and come in and select this end, and you can now see that we have thickness and a defined thickness for our walls, and it's also on the house layer. So continue with this and experiment as you play with Tommy Church's Pool Garden.